Why am I never satisfied? Why are we never satisfied? Well, it's a good thing that you're not because that's the way that we feel the motivating force behind all development, both in the physical and in the spiritual hidden causative level of nature. Anything that we feel as movement from moving to some other part of the world to the subtlest shift in an inner attitude happens only because this force has made us so uncomfortable and unable to fulfill our desires in our current state that we begin to feel a need for a greater satisfaction that we calculate must exist in that new situation. And we move just that far and no further. A person doesn't even move a finger or scratch their nose if not for this calculation. How to get the maximum amount of pleasure for the minimum amount of effort. It is the E equals MC squared of the ego. This formula is so pervasive that we never choose anything unless it's presented to us in that way. We only choose between what we consider to be painful or pleasurable and we always choose pleasure. Either an immediate one or a big enough one in the future that we're willing to pay for with a little bit of suffering. But pleasure does not exist in and of itself. There has to be something opposite to it in nature before it can be sensed. We never experience anything as its essence, only by comparison. We feel light compared to darkness, warmth compared to cold, pleasure compared to pain. If there's nothing opposite to it, there is simply no sensation. Pleasure is actually the meeting point between a need and its fulfillment. And the greater that the need is, the greater the experience of pleasure. So why is it that pleasure always disappears? You know what it's like when you're a little hungry. You start thinking about what you could eat. Hmm, maybe a pretzel. Yeah, okay, maybe later. But the hunger keeps on growing. Maybe I'll have a couple of hot dogs. No, a whole pizza. No, I know, a steak, a big sirloin. Vegetarians, please substitute a tofu loaf from your imagination with a baked potato and all the condiments imaginable. And then when dinner finally comes, you could eat a steak so big that it needs its own area code. And that first bite is pure ecstasy. And the next bite is wonderful. The next bite is good. And the next bite is okay, and the next is whatever it is, and the next one is, no, not another bite, I'm going to be sick. The need is diminished. It no longer stands opposite to the steak. And now the pleasure can't be sensed because the need has been extinguished. And this all happens because we're trying to satisfy only ourselves. And that egoistic desire is ultimately what makes human experience limited and physical because our own needs are tiny and they're built in such a way that they can never be satisfied and yet we find ourselves longing for lasting pleasure and we feel that somehow it must exist and it does but in order to feel that first we need an unlimited ever expanding desire that can draw a boundless fulfillment and to do that you have to seek pleasure in the fulfillment of others because this desire to bestow is a spiritual desire and one taste of it is greater than all the pleasure felt by all creatures over all time because it's a pleasure not felt in our little subjective needs but in everything there's no limit to that desire and there is no end to the pleasure derived from that need <laughs>